Hello everybody and welcome to Path to Platinum, the series where I don't get games before release, so I have to make the guide when it's way too late. Today we're going to be looking at the newest addition to the Five Nights franchise, Security Breach, which changes up the whole dynamic with open world exploration, and of course the dreaded collectibles scattered throughout the game. But before I show you guys any of that, if you guys enjoy this video or it helps you out, and please don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course hit that notification bell to support me, and I really appreciate that. Secondly, I'd just like to say that I live stream as often as I can here on my channel, so consider stopping by to come chill with me and the gang. Occasionally it's a fun time where shit like this happens. Stealth! Press R3 to crouch! I like how it's telling me after I already crouched to get through the vent, which I had to do to get through the vent, and I also had to crouch under the shutter to get the fucking photo pass, which I had to do in order to get it, but the game is now telling me how to fucking crouch? Does that make any goddamn sense? No, it doesn't. Ah! Oh, shit! Alright. Even though I've seen that happen a hundred times, I still got scared for some reason. <laughs> now with all that shameless plugging out of the way, it's time to delve deep into the Mega Pizza Plex to find out the mysteries behind it and what's really going on, although mostly to find collectibles. This is... Security Breach. Alright, so before we go over anything specific, first I'm going to begin this video by explaining some important things that you should keep in mind throughout your playthrough if you want to fully optimize your run. However, if you don't need to hear this and you already know what you're doing, then feel free to use the timestamp navigation tool in the description to jump to any specific trophy or collectible that you'd like to see or hear about. Otherwise, if you want the full rundown or you're just starting out the game, then feel free to keep following along from here. So the first thing I'm going to talk about that you should know before really getting into this game is that at the time of this video's creation, as of right now, the Shattered Dreams trophy is glitched on the PS5 version of the game and will not unlock under any circumstances. Now I have heard that apparently this isn't the case for the PS4 version of the game according to someone in my livestream chat. However, as for the PS5 version, we will unfortunately have to wait for them to release a patch for the game that fixes the trophy. I wouldn't worry about this one too much, the trophy's requirements are very simple and straightforward, and also glitch trophies always get fixed eventually, it's just a matter of time. Secondly, there's a trophy you can get in this game called Hide and Seek Master, which requires you to never hide once throughout the entire game. This is actually nowhere near as difficult as you would think, Hiding is by no means mandatory, and it's never too difficult to lose an animatronic during a chase. They lose aggro very easily, especially when you run around corners. Also, once you're close to reaching 6am, I find the animatronics become a lot less active, and you don't actually have to deal with them that often. That being said, you should definitely go for all the trophies in one run, including this trophy, so you don't have to save it for a second playthrough. Also, I'll mention this since somebody asked me this during my livestream playthrough, but hiding inside Freddy obviously does not count as a hiding spot, so you don't have to worry about that. Thirdly, it's worth mentioning that there is one prize collectible that could be potentially missable. You can find this collectible in the back corner of the daycare, right around the ball pit, and it's actually a flashlight upgrade, which is pretty handy for the early game. The reason why I mention this collectible is because once you complete the daycare section, the sun animatronic bans you from the daycare, preventing you from ever entering it again. So if you miss this prize, then you may have to get it on another playthrough. So it's important to keep this one in mind as it's the only truly missable collectible in this game. Now this actually happened to me on my run and I ended up missing it. However, there was a glitch that I was able to exploit to get back into the daycare and grab this prize. Now, I will show you guys how to do this glitch in case you run into the same problem. However, I'm assuming that once this game has been patched enough times, that this glitch might not even exist anymore, depending on when you are watching this video. 
So just know that this may not work for everyone, but here's how to do the glitch. I'm back now. I'm fucking back. All right, let's try this glitch, shall we? So stand right up against the door, like so. We're gonna call Freddy. Well, he didn't come from the same direction as he did for the guy in the video. I jumped, just like he said. <gasps> did it work? Oh, it worked! <laughs> that is awesome! Woo! Let's go, fuck you, sun and moon. Piece of bitch. Lastly, it's worth mentioning that once the in-game clock reaches 6 a.m., which will happen automatically after Freddy gets his second upgrade, the game will enter a pseudo-permadeath scenario. What I mean by this is that the save stations will be disabled from 6 a.m. and onward, meaning you won't be able to save your game after that. Now this makes collectible hunting extremely stressful, because let's say you run around and pick up 20 collectibles or something, and then you die. You'll have to restart and pick them up all over again. This fucking sucks, and I have no earthly idea as to why Scott thought this was a good idea to include this in the game. Regardless, this will be the most strenuous part of the game, and you will have to be extra careful not to fuck up and die. Now, during the creation of this video, there is currently an existing glitch that allows you to save the game after 6 a.m., saving you a whole world of torture. However, this glitch was clearly not intended to be in the game, and so you could bet your ass that it's going to get patched out soon if it hasn't already by the time you're watching this. But in case the glitch still works, then I'll show you how to do the glitch right now. So once you've reached 6 a.m. and you chose to stay when Freddy asks you for your choice, simply return to Roxy's Raceway and the assist driver head will be there once again and you can pick it up yet again. Once you do this, the in-game clock will automatically reset to 5.15 a.m. for some reason and then the save stations will return to normal, allowing you to save again as you normally would. Personally, I take no shame in exploiting something like this, especially given the bullshit this game throws at you sometimes. Like, for example, having an animatronic spawn right in front of you when you least expect it, or having the game randomly crash, as it is pretty prone to doing. I've actually had this game crash on me probably like five or six times during my run. And the fact that that can even happen during a permadeath scenario is absolute bullshit, and I don't give a fuck about cheating, so if this glitch still exists, exploit it to your heart's content, and feel no shame. Otherwise, my heart goes out to you guys, you have my sympathies, and my condolences, and best of luck not dying, or having the game crash. Now that we got all that important info out of the way, it's time we focused on the collectibles. So from this point forward during the video, I'm going to be showing the locations of all the trophy-related collectibles in the order of which you were able to obtain them. This way, it's designed so that you could follow along and not have to worry about missing anything during your run. However, I will say that if there are any collectibles that you would rather not stress about getting, especially when you're being chased by an animatronic, you can do what I did and save the collectible hunting for later in the game, once Freddy has obtained the Roxy upgrade allowing him to see collectibles through walls, making it much easier to obtain them and potentially saves you time from having to look for them. I also noticed that during this part of the game, that the animatronics hunting you become much less active, and you rarely see them most of the time, minus a few exceptions. Hell, there are even moments where staff bots will spot you, and nobody shows up to kill you, strangely enough, so this would be absolutely prime time for collectible hunting. The path of least resistance and whatnot. Uh, this one, actually, this present that you're about to see me loot here is uh, pretty interesting because you could potentially miss it permanently, and if you do, then you're fucked and you'll have to play another playthrough. Uh, because you're not allowed back in that room at any point for any reason. Uh, currently, you can utilize a glitch to get back in that room. Uh, I was able to get back in that room, actually, because uh, um, Freddy, when you're not inside him, if you call him to you and he approaches a door that you're not allowed to open, it'll open for him for some reason. However, I'm assuming that that's going to get patched out, so by the time you're watching this video, uh, you will potentially not be able to enter areas like that or backtrack. Uh, you'll be able to backtrack a lot less, most likely. But, uh, yes, we're in the lobby now. Uh, Chica's roaming around trying to fucking murder us. 
you will notice in some of these clips that, uh, like, for example, you can see on the right that I have the Phaser Blaster, which obviously you wouldn't have at this point in time. That's because I missed these collectibles when I was first here, and I had to come back for them much later in the game when I was, uh, you know, wrapping up all my collectibles that I needed. Uh, and that's the thing about this game. Like, some of the prizes, like I was talking about that one in the maintenance tunnels that's uh, potentially permanently missable, there are some collectibles in this game that are, uh, frighteningly so, potentially permanently missable. Um, like, the only reason I was able to get every collectible in this game on my first playthrough is because of glitches. There is 100% uh, uh, two or three collectibles that I should have missed, but didn't because the glitches are just uh, so goddamn amazing in this game. And extremely helpful and convenient. Because, let, let's fucking be honest, missables in any regard, whether it be a missable trophy, or a missable collectible, or missable anything, just fucking blows dick hole, alright? They suck, and I don't like them, not a big fan, and it especially sucks for, you know, trophy hunters in particular, but, uh, mostly for people like me, specifically, we're in the daycare now, you need the daycare pass to get here, um, but that's, I mean, you can't miss the daycare pass, you have to get it to progress the story, but anyways, uh, you know, it, it especially sucks for people like me, because what I typically like to do, see, I don't like following a guide for a game on my first, my very first playthrough of a game. I like playing my first playthrough of a game completely blind so that things can actually, like, surprise me and, like, um, although actually, you know, I, funny enough, that wasn't really the case for me in this game because, uh, I watched it, Markiplier's entire full playthrough, name dropping! His playthrough was great, and he's obviously fucking hilarious if you didn't know that already. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, speaking of, you know what, I'll get back to, uh, what I was just saying in a minute. Because this collectible is very important. When you get to the daycare here, uh, you will happen upon this area here, over in the back corner here, uh, next to the ball pit. Uh, if you don't come up this, uh, very sneaky hidden stairway, you will miss this, uh, flashlight upgrade. And if you miss this... This is another area where you could potentially get fucked because you're not allowed back in the daycare after you complete it. Uh, like, this area you see me in now, you're allowed in this area, but you're not allowed in, like, the play area where uh, the Sun and Moon anim animatronic are actively trying to kill you um, during that whole section where you get the uh, security badge and shit, uh, the, the first upgrade, which I also didn't show because that's pretty much not missable either you have to get it in order to progress but um yeah that prize you got to be so fucking careful that you don't miss that again because i played my first playthrough blind and because that's something that i like to do uh i ended up missing it and i had to fucking uh utilize a glitch to be able to go back into the daycare and get it and you know that's what's so interesting about uh this game like this game has so many glitches and broken shit on release. Like, it's it's absolutely, a, it feels like an unfinished game. Although it is very, like, polished and beautiful and clean looking, uh, it just plays a little janky, but you could tell they were trying to go for, like, AAA status with this game, but they didn't quite hit the mark, and it came out looking like a game still in alpha, kinda, or maybe that's over exaggerating a little bit but there is a slew of issues technical issues in this game but what's so hilarious about them uh, again you wouldn't have the phaser blaster here but i do and it's actually incredibly annoying to get this box because that secure or that staff bot right there is a motherfucker and when you first come to this area roxy's chasing you so that could be hella inconvenient to try and get that uh you may want to wait until later in the game to come back here and grab this stuff when uh, Roxy's not here anymore, uh, and yeah, because that's what I did. Like I, I, I only grabbed so many of the collectibles in this game once I got the Roxy upgrade for Freddy, because it makes it so much easier when you're able to see everything through walls. Because uh, that's what the upgrade allows you to do. You can see all the collectibles through walls, except messages. You can't see messages through walls, which is really annoying. Because if you miss a message, you'll be like, "What the fuck? Where's the one I'm missing?" Also, this is the next uh, security badge upgrade. Uh, 
So I'm going to be showing the security badge locations because uh, they are potentially um, pretty easy to miss. Uh, sort of. Like, you need them to progress, but it's also very easy to, like, not even think to click on the stupid uh, Freddy head to, to get the actual security badge. Like, there is definitely... I've seen people, like, absentmindedly walk away from them without even picking it up all the time. And I've also had people, uh, when I was live-streaming my playthrough, be like, Oh, where's all, where are the security upgrades? I don't know where they all are. I'm missing one. And it's like, to avoid that from happening, I'm showing where they all are in the guide as well. So, you're fucking welcome. But, yeah. Anyways, back to what I was saying earlier about uh, the, the glitches in the game and this game having so many technical issues. You would think, because normally, uh, when a game comes out like that on release, uh, case in point, fucking Cyberpunk... Uh, that game came out looking like hot dog shit, and, uh, people's, people's initial experiences with the game were fucking scarred for life. Like, I'm sure that set the bar for a lot of people in terms of, like, that's an experience they'll never forget in the worst absolute possible way. Uh, so, you know, yeah, you, you really want to make sure when you release your game that it fucking works, and it's actually fun to play, and it doesn't have all these issues. But that's what's so fucking hilarious about this game, is, uh, this game is actually, like, more fun to play with all the issues. I know that sounds, like, crazy, but I, when, when, when you, when you take a look at, like, how many times the glitches actually helped me do shit, uh, like I, like I was saying, to go back to areas where I missed collectibles, and I shouldn't have been able to, but because of glitches, I, I was able to. It, like, saved my first playthrough. And th that goes in, uh, hand in hand with what I was saying earlier about how I like to play uh, my first playthroughs of games blind. But it also sucks for, like, it, it, it constantly conflicts with my the, the trophy hunter uh, side of me. Because if you I, I also want my, my playthroughs of games to be uh, trophy optimal. Which means, if I can manage it, I want to get everything uh, in one run. Now, that isn't always possible. Again, especially when you're playing a game blind, because you're not following a guide. Like, I, I just try my best to find all these collectibles, like, without using a guide. But sometimes, especially when a game has missables, like I was saying, you'll find out that you missed one too late, like, after the fact. And then you'll be like, motherfucker, now I gotta play this fucking game again? Like, and you may not have necessarily wanted to play another playthrough back-to-back, -back, and it's depending on how you enjoyed the game, and it's like, God damn it! like, it sucks being put in that situation, and depending on when the hell you're watching this video, you could very well be in that situation, uh, assuming that this game, uh, patched out a bunch of the issues with it. I'm assuming all the glitches in this game are not gonna be possible, uh, after a certain amount of time has passed. Uh, I think that's a fair assumption, honestly, because clearly uh, a lot of the asshole things about this game were, like, clearly intended. Like, the missables are fucking intended. Uh, you know. And not only that, but when you get towards the end of the game, uh, once the clock's about to hit 6 a.m., you enter a fucking... Like I was saying earlier in the video, a permadeath, a pseudo-permadeath scenario where if you die, no matter how much collectibles and shit you picked up, no matter how much shit you did, uh, your ass gets sent back to 6am. And, like, that was clearly intentionally put in the game to frustrate the ever-living shit out of the player. Like, uh, to make it, like, a, a quote-unquote challenging aspect when really it's just nothing but annoying. There's nothing challenging about it. Cause there's just so much bullshit in this game, man. Like, and I already talked about this earlier with like the game's prone to crashing, animatronics can bullshit, like not behave consistently and spawn in very random and sporadic locations and just be very unpredictable at times. Uh, or sometimes they don't show up at all when they're supposed to. And it's because of how inconsistent this game is, it doesn't make it ch challenging at all in a fun way. It just makes it more frustrating than anything and that's where i draw the line like as a trophy hunter and i believe i speak for all trophy hunters when i say this but if there's shit you can exploit in a game
to make something that would otherwise be very annoying much easier on yourself? A hundred percent you do that every day of the week you do that. Like, I don't give a shit. You do what you gotta do to get those fucking trophies. And I know some people, uh, you know, have their pride and they're like, No! No! Using glitches and exports would be cheating, man! I can't bring myself to bloody do it! And I totally understand that, and I try my best to- Because I have a, a, a level of pride as well, uh, and I, I don't like to exploit if I can help it. But, again, if it makes something that's annoying, like, that much easier to do, hell yeah, you do it. You do it every time. And I stand by that. Like, there, there's there's too many bullshit trophies in other games, and I'm sure you guys know this. Because uh, I'm sure you guys, if you guys are trying to platinum this game, then uh, chances are you're trophy hunters and you, you've been around the block. You've probably played uh, a, an asshole game or two that had an absolute bitch trophy in it. Uh, so this collectible is when you're uh, running through the endoskeleton part. And this collectible can potentially be very annoying to get because, uh, yeah, you got an army of endoskeletons chasing you. You couldn't see it in the clip there, but they were definitely behind me <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, coming to kill me. And uh, I don't know how anyone would ever miss this security badge, but I'm showing it anyway. There you go. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, for that reason, I actually came back to get that Nightmare Plush collectible in the endoskeleton area because much like a lot of the areas in the game if you wait till like way later after freddy has his roxy upgrade um you're you're allowed to have freddy with you in areas that you couldn't have him previously and it's super helpful especially for that area in particular because uh, normally when you when you first run through the endoskeleton area uh you 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 don't have freddy and you can't use him to get through there so your ass is way more likely to die. Uh, but if you're allowed to take Freddy in there, especially after he gets his Freddy upgrades too, uh, and he has more battery life, it's easy to just call him to wherever the hell you are uh, and then just walk out like a fucking bouse. Like a bouse! And, uh, you know, of course, you will probably notice this at some point throughout the video, uh, especially if you're following along from the beginning. Uh, if you haven't noticed it already, I actually haven't been paying attention because if you couldn't tell, this video is long as fuck, and I'm gonna be sitting here talking for a while, trying to trying my best to be consistent with uh, entertaining and good, informative commentary. But uh, you will notice at times during this video where I will revisit an area that I've already been to grab stuff that was there that I didn't get the first time. It doesn't happen too much throughout this video. I think it only happens like once or twice. But uh, it definitely happens a couple times. Like, for example, I know I do it in Roxy's Wasteway where uh, I don't get everything there on my first visit and I have to go back and get the shit I didn't get on my second visit. And some of you watching will be like, Matt, what the fuck? Why? Why didn't you grab that stuff with your first hair? You, you, I could have got it too, but, but because you didn't do it, I didn't do it. And it's like... The fuck do you want from me, alright? I'm not perfect. I, I try my best to make a good guide, but that's just it. That's just me trying my best. And hey, you ever heard of the term human error? I fuck up. I make mistakes. Deal with it. But anyways, I should probably talk a little bit about what's going on on screen right now. We're visiting Phaser Blast, and uh, something about this game, if you haven't noticed it already, is uh, you can kind of, like not with everything, but you can kind of pick and choose the order of, like, where you go and how you do things in this game. Like, you don't have to come to Phaser Blast right now. I could have gone to fucking Loading Docks instead. Um, but, yeah, so the game at times kind of gives you the option to do what you want. Now, uh, the reason why, like, kind of like with the Party Pass, too, they they make you choose if you want to go to um, Monty Golf or uh, Phaser Blast. Because you, you can choose. And, uh... I chose Phaser Blast because the Phaser Blaster is not only amazing and way better than the camera, the camera's not terrible, it does have its niche uses, uh, and we will need it for uh, some other stuff coming up, which I'll talk more about later. There's the bowling ticket, which we need to get into Bonnie Bowl, because uh, there's collectibles there too. But um, 
yeah, anyways, uh, the reason why I opted for the Phaser Blaster over the camera is because I just think the Phaser Blaster is all around better. Also, don't forget to pick up your security badge. There it is, level 5. But, uh, yeah, and y not only do I think the Phaser Blaster is, like, just kind of all around better than the camera, but um, it's hella useful in the early game. Like, I find that the sooner you get the Phaser Blaster, the better, because you get more mileage out of it. And what I mean by that is, uh, there's some things that happen later in the game to the animatronics that make the Phaser Blaster less effective. Um, like, well, this isn't really a spoiler, but, uh, for example, Monty, uh, which you won't have to deal with him until, like, later, if you're doing things in the same order as me, but, uh, he's wearing sunglasses, and not only does the camera not work on him, but so does the Phaser Blaster. And there's a couple other things like that that happen, too, uh, with one of the other animatronics that makes it so that you can't use the Phaser Blaster on that one either. But the Phaser Blaster always works on Chica. Uh, you never have an issue there. So, and that's why it's so good to have it, I find, in the early game. Also, when you're in uh, the Phaser Blast minigame, and you're capturing the points and doing the little minigame, don't forget to come to this back uh, storage closet back here to get this present. Uh, apparently, this one's missable. I've never actually tried to go back into the Phaser Blaster minigame after completing it, but uh, apparently you're not allowed to go back there, so just make sure you grab that on your first visit. Also, another hugely missable thing, uh, this is when you actually get the Phaser Blaster after doing the minigame. Make sure you come into this vent here, which is right next to the Phaser Blaster. Uh, you'll find not only this message along the path here, but there is also an extremely important uh, scene that we need to have play out once you reach the very end of the pathway. So here we go, you'll get this little uh, scene, and you'll find this secret room with Vanny written on the wall. Uh, you need to have this scene play out, you need to have Gregory and Freddy talk about it, uh, which means you have to come up here and physically look at the fucking room. Um, uh, by the way, if you're wondering where the hell I am now, I went through that vent that was right next to the salad bar, uh, just in case you're a little lost. But. Uh, yeah, you, you have to have that scene play out in order to get one of the endings in the game. And if you miss that scene, because you're apparently not able to enter Phaser Blast again after you do it, you will never be able to go back there and see that scene again if you didn't do it the first time, meaning you will your ass is going to play an entire another playthrough of this game. Again, missables. They fucking suck. They're asshole. I fucking hate them. They're awful. Aren't you guys happy I'm making this guide, though? Uh, unless you weren't watching it and you already were playing the game and you're only now watching it after already f having fucked up and now you're face palming being like god damn it why didn't i watch matt's uh fucking amazing beautiful guide on this game i'm so fucking stupid uh cry 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 um you know and all that and i'm sure you're going through all that right now but hey it's okay because you know now and if you didn't know before you're kind of SOL, but them's the breaks. I don't know what to say. That's just how it is. That's life. So now, uh, again, we're continuing through the loading docks. Don't forget to come into the security office down here. Uh, this is where you can play the uh, Make the Pizza mini game. And there's a security badge on the table. Whoa! Fucking nuts! But yeah, there it is. And uh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's that one. There's a ton of fucking shit, like, this is a perfect example of what I was talking about earlier, where, uh, I visit the loading, like, obviously I'm here in the loading docks right now, and there's a fuck ton of collectibles down here, but, uh, you're gonna see me leave the loading docks, uh, after the next few collectibles, and there's still stuff around here, but I leave the loading docks anyway, uh, and it, that doesn't really matter too much, because... You have to go to Bonnie Bowl to get the Monty mix to fucking deal with Chica, and that's just something you have to do if you want to prog progress the game. So, you you come back here, is my point. Like, it doesn't really matter if we're coming and going, because we're going to have to come back here later anyway, so it doesn't really matter if we miss shit. Don't worry about it too much! And, you know, backtracking is probably inevitably going to be a thing that you're going to have to do in this game anyway. Uh, you know, because again, getting uh, the Roxy upgrade for Freddy just makes things so much simpler to find the collectibles. Again, accept the messages. And that's another thing that is intentional. Speaking of messages, here's the next one. 
But that was absolutely intentional to be a motherfucker. Like, why? Why, Scott? Why do you include asshole things in your game that don't have to be asshole, but they are? And it's just frustrating and annoying. Like, what the fuck? It's not like... It's not like people are playing your game and being like, Oh, ha ha! Oh, I missed these messages because you can't see them with the Roxy upgrade and I couldn't find them. Oh, oh, no! Like, put, that's so much fun! Now I get to play another playthrough to go get the shit I missed. No, nobody's saying that. Nobody's reacting that way. Nobody enjoys having to redo shit. Alright? It just sucks. And it, actually, I was talking about this with my buddy, uh, well, one of my good friends, because he, he totally agrees with me on the subject, and he was watching me live stream this, and he saw my plight and my frustration when I found out that I had missed stuff, and I didn't know about the glitches at the time to be able to go back and get them, and he saw that, he saw my, uh, clear and utter frustration, and he was like, yeah, missables fucking suck, they should never be a thing, and he was saying, like, um... The only reasons you should have to replay a video game, uh, like, more than once, is if the game has actual honest-to-god replay value. Like, for example, if the game has an alternate difficulty that you unlock after beating it the first time around, or if there's shit that you can only see on a second playthrough, like maybe for different endings, or different lore, maybe different stuff would show up in the run, and it would give you a reason to, like, go find that new stuff that you didn't see around in the first time. Like, those are genuine reasons to replay a game that give it replay value. Uh, but no, just straight up missable collectibles? That's just a kick in the dick, alright? Like, nobody is looking forward to jumping into a second playthrough of a game because they missed one fucking collectible. Like, are you kidding me? Like, that's bullshit. People, when people have to replay a game, or want to replay a game, it should be for a goddamn good reason, and you should be getting something out of it, not just pure and utter fucking frustration. Um, this is the only collectible in this entire area. The, uh, trash compactor slash, slash sewer area. Um, and if you, if you somehow were, managed to miss that collectible, it is possible to go back down there and get it. So, uh, it's not the end of the world. But here we are, we're back in the loading docks. Uh, see, I think, I think, but I'm not sure. I think I could have came back and, or I think I could have grabbed this message here on my first visit, but I didn't see it, so, oh well, too fucking bad, we're getting it now though, and, uh, yeah, oh, here we are, so this is our first real visit to Roxy's Raceway, and there's a ton of collectibles here, uh, just a ton of shit, but, uh, we, on my first visit, I only get about half the stuff. That's actually here, and I don't get the rest of it until my return visit, so... That's a thing that happens! It's gonna happen, but hey, again, doesn't really matter if we have to revisit areas, because once we got that upgrade, it's all good! And yeah, now now I'm getting to that point, it's, it's, it's officially hitting me, where it's like, Matt, you've been talking for so long about stuff that's relevant to the bloody video, but now you're reaching a point where there's just there's just too much video and not enough to talk about. So what are you going to bloody do now, mate? And it's like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do now. I'm going to keep talking. Because the second I stop talking, that's when the video officially becomes shit. So that's the only thing I know for sure. But, um... Yeah, it, it you know, this game was... Uh, Pretty impressive to me in the way, this is a total segue by the way, it has nothing to do with what I was just talking about, but uh, this game impressed me in the sense that, because usually when I watch someone play a game, it's not often that I watch uh, another content creator do an entire playthrough of a game, I usually only do that when it's a game that, I'm not, that I don't have any intentions of playing for myself. And I'm interested in, in enough in the game to want to see it, but I don't want to have to spend money on it, right? So that's why I like watching other people's playthroughs on certain games. Like, for example, a great, ex a g great example of that is Little Nightmares. I didn't want to actually buy it because uh, those games are a one-and-done playthrough, and then there's no reason to ever play it again. Um, fucking... So I like... 
people I like watching people play stuff like that and I I had what well, I mentioned earlier that I uh, I mean I've known about Five Nights at Freddy's ever since the first one came out and it blew up into this wide wide uh, worldwide phenomenon wide wide what the fuck did I just say <laughs> We're, we're keeping all the audio, baby. We're keeping it all. We're not editing shit out. But, uh... Anyways, fucking... Yeah, I've been watching Markiplier play all the games since then. Since the first one. There's the next Freddy upgrade. Those are great. Uh, and, um... Yeah, fucking... Uh, I never had a desire to buy and play any of the Five Nights games for myself. Uh, for me, watching them was simply enough to enjoy them. But this was the first one where I was like, man, I want to play this game. This game looks amazing. And it really does look amazing. Like, even, look at this room I'm in right now. Like, Jesus Christ, there's bright lights everywhere. Everything's so colorful and vibrant, full of energy and life. And that's easily this game's, like, strongest asset, I would say, is the visuals. This game looks beautiful. It's one of the, it's easily one of the best looking games I've ever played, 100%. But, uh, still has all those other issues, though. Which, you know, unfortunately is the norm of gaming. Uh, games pretty much for indefinitely, for the rest of time, will come out unfinished. Uh, unfinished games are the new norm. Uh, the days of, like, a game actually coming out and, like, remember, remember PlayStation 2 games where they came out and you got a completed game that had a bunch of, like added content besides the main story that otherwise would have been DLC, but DLC didn't exist back then, and kind of like Resident Evil 4 with uh, Assignment Ada and Separate Ways and shit. Like, th stuff like that would have 100% been DLC if RE4 were made today. <laughs> but, uh, hey, we're back in Roxy's Raceway grabbing the collectibles we didn't get on our first visit. Whoa! But yeah, like, thinking about that stuff is always very interesting. Because, uh, back then, games were actually finished, and so much love and care and time and effort went into them to come out looking that way, and being a fulfilling experience, and it just sucks that that is a thing of the past, like, that's just not how it works anymore. Now, when you buy a game, you expect it to be unfinished, and, like, that's why it sucks being a content creator, because you want things right away when they come out, especially if it's something that interests you. But it's pretty much always better to wait for a game to get cheaper, have all the DLC come out for it, and then they release like a completed edition of it that has everything included. Also, if you're wondering why the hell I'm showing this footage, this is for the Trophy Say Cheese at the Glamrock Salon. As you can see, there's like fucking a million staff bots roaming around outside the salon. And right here is where we looped the... Uh, Faz camera that I was talking about earlier over in Gator Golf. You won't be able to get this yet, but I'm just showing you that it exists and this is where it is. And yeah, you can absolutely get the trophy to um, snap a uh, photo of four uh, staff bots, stunning them all in the process. And there's, it, it says you gotta stun four or more, and there's more than four outside the salon, so makes for a great spot to get the trophy, which is why I showed it. That was the point of that, in case you were wondering. Also, this is our first visit to the uh, Glamrock Salon, and there's uh, a fair amount of collectibles over here and stuff to do. It's definitely a point of interest, uh, but more importantly, it's also the location of uh, the first Princess Quest, which is a thing. Oh, there's the shoes, too. Those are great, because they make you run faster. Um... That's something that's incredibly annoying by this uh, about this game. There, there's so many upgrades in this game. Like the fizzy faz upgrades your endurance meter, but it doesn't tell you that it does that, so you would never know. <laughs> and the same with the shoes. They don't tell you shit. They just say shoes. Uh, but you, you do noticeably run faster when you have them. But yes, this is the uh, the first princess quest, so we can actually play it, and it's a mini game. I'm not going to show the entire uh, playthrough of it. But what I will show you are the puzzles. So in case you're, uh, like, MOTHERFUCKER, I'M TOO STUPID TO FIGURE THIS SHIT OUT! Uh, here we go. This is the solution. I probably should have warned that I was gonna spoil it before I showed it, but... You're welcome. And if I spoiled it, well... Sorry about that. Sorry, that's, uh, that's just how these guides go. Also, you'll notice you can now, you now have enough security clearance to enter Monty's room. 
which has some nice uh, little collectibles in here as well. So we're definitely going to want to come back and scoop up those bad boys, because that's just how it is. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But uh, yeah, there's the golden Freddy. Yep, I was right. I guess they're right. Ain't that right, Freddy? <laughs> oh man. Oh man! Freddy's hilarious, dude. Even when he's not trying to be. Now that's comedy. Uh, this room here is in the back of uh, Chica's room. But I don't think... Because we came to Chica's room earlier. So you may be wondering, Matt, why are you only grabbing this now if you could have grabbed it the first visit? I don't think that door opened on your first visit. I could be wrong about that. I, I genuinely don't remember. But that was when I got it. And um, this room here is uh, it's got some stuff. It's definitely got some things that we could pick up. Some good shit. But yeah, after we uh, loot a couple of these bad boys in the area, we're going to be making our way over to uh, Monty's Gator Golf pretty soon. That's going to be fun, right? It's actually, uh, I would say, the most stressful. Um, well, actually, no. See, I keep forgetting that when you first go to Monty Golf, you don't actually fight Monty there on your first visit. You you do on your second. So I but I associate the area with fighting Monty, even though you don't really fight him there per se. It, it's complicated, but uh, basically there's like another way into Monty Golf. Uh, but it's like it has nothing to do with the original area that you explore. So, but I still associate the entire area with Monty. In my mind, it's weird. It's complicated, all right? Monty's frozen treats. I wonder if those taste any good. Who knows? But yeah, we're just uh, scoping out the area in front of Monty Golf, uh, which I still consider to be Monty Golf, even though we're not actually in there yet. But, uh, and yes, you know, obviously now would be, we're way, out, uh, way past the point of um, 6 a.m. Because you can't get the second party pass to enter Monty Golf. If you used it at Phaser Blast like I did, uh, until after 6 a.m. So technically, uh, if the game had patched out the save glitch, which I talked about in the beginning of the video, uh, then you would be doing this uh, all in, in one take. Praying to God that you don't die, probably stressing your eyes out, assuming they patched it again. But uh, my heart goes out to you guys if that is the case with future viewers. If this game is fucked now, and, and the 6 a.m. section is, like, really fucking hard, then my my condolences, and I, I pray the best for you guys. Best of luck on your run. Now, this is, uh, fucking the, the golf, m fucking mini golf, uh, arcade minigame, which is located in Monty's Gator Golf, in the center of the area. Now, if you're currently watching the screen right now being like, what the fuck? fuck am I watching? Yeah, uh, this isn't entirely my fault, in my fucking defense. I, I like how when you start up this minigame, and mind you, I'm playing this on console, obviously, because this is a fucking trophy guide, so I'm playing this on PlayStation, and, uh, I don't know, maybe the controls would be more obvious. By the way, this is, the these mini golf courses are fucking amazing, they look phenomenal, they're some of the coolest rooms in the game. And, and it's a fucking golfing minigame, too. Like, it has some of the coolest uh, scenery and uh, aesthetic views in the entire game. Like, these golf courses are fucking amazing. They look awesome. But, uh, anyways. Moving on. Fucking, uh... Yeah, so... I don't know, maybe maybe the controls are more obvious on, um... On PC. I wouldn't fucking know. I haven't played this on PC. But on console... Well, I mean, this is really uh, an issue with the game in general. But yeah, when you when you first play the the golf mini game, they don't tell you shit, which you may have fucking noticed. But yeah, when it, as soon as you start up the game, they're just like, boom, play it, bitch. Like they don't explain anything, no rules, no tutorial, nothing. That I was mad that wasn't a hole in one. So close, but um, yeah, I was fucking pissed. And it took me legit, like, probably, like, I don't know, like, five to ten minutes to figure out the controls. No joke. Um, 
Because they're it, it's really hard to find out how to shoot. Like, the controls on how to shoot on console are not at all what you would expect. I kept fucking up this shot over and over. I didn't realize you needed full beans, but you absolutely do. You, you just power that shot, full meter, all the way up. But yeah, anyways, uh, you guys are probably frustrated, and you're like, Matt, shut the fuck up and tell me how to play. Uh, okay, I got you, fam, I got you. So you hold circle, right? And then you get the up arrow on the on the on your cursor and then you hold up on the uh, the left analog stick and the longer you hold it the more power you get on your swing you could see how powerful your swing is in the bottom right corner uh on the monty meter there and yeah that's how you shoot <laughs> it took me so long to figure that out. i was like what the fuck how do you play this fucking game dude how it's bullshit and again, they don't tell you. That's some, that is one of my hugest pet peeves. Hugest? That's not a word, is it? Probably not. It is now. But, um... Right, see, that's another fucking awesome room. They're all jamming in the back there. I don't know why Freddy isn't there. Seems kind of dick, guys. Where the fuck's Freddy? Freddy's always talking about how he loves you guys and that you're his friends. But do you reciprocate? Do you show the same to him? Fuck no. And that's bullshit. Anyways, uh, yeah, so that was the, uh, the golf minigame, and, it, uh, I didn't explain at all what was required for the trophy. You don't just beat it, you actually have to get un a score under 28. Uh, you, you could see after every round what the score is, like, it'll say 28 at the, uh, at the end of the scoreboard. Uh, and you just have to get under 28, which, as you can see, isn't fucking very hard, because, uh, I fucked up a ton of my shots, I did not play it very well at all, and I'm pretty sure no one in this world would have trouble getting that trophy. Pretty sure everyone would get it, uh, without issue. But I just showed my entire, uh, journey doing it anyway, because in case you wanted to see just how bad someone can do it and still get the trophy, you know, there you go. There's fucking entertainment value in that, no? People love watching other people fuck up. That's a thing. But yeah, so, uh, and yeah, this is, we're, we're wrapping up, uh, picking up the last few collectibles. This is the security office where you will get your final, uh, security badge upgrade. So you'll hit level 8, assuming you didn't miss any of the previous ones. And of course, there's timestamps in the description, so if you did, just refer to the timestamps in the description. Uh, the Monty Cam is also in here. I showed it earlier. So I'm not going to show it again, but you do loot the Monty Cam in that same room. And so, yeah, uh, if you didn't have it already, you would definitely have it now. Uh, this was... This is the room where, uh, where Vanny kidnaps you, and then you gotta loot the screwdriver and, and climb out through the vent. Uh, after Vanessa catches you uh, in the uh, prize counter area. And I... There was a door there that I don't think opened the, on your first visit, so you actually have to go back there and, uh... And get grab that collectible that I didn't get, or or maybe it did open and I'm just stupid, but I'm pretty sure it didn't open. I think you needed a uh, higher security level to get through. And now we're in the daycare theater. Now you might have visited this area already, but this is my first visit. And you could, as soon as you get here, you could get this trophy. Boom! You shoot that staff bot in the face, you get a trophy for it. Very easy, very doable. Also. Uh, you can listen to that thing tell jokes for a while, and but it always glitches out. Like, rarely do you ever come in here and have the staff bot actually telling its jokes. Like, I know through Markiplier's entire playthrough of this game, he never once heard what that staff bot actually has to say. You would just hear the guy on the intercom go, and now the comedy stylings of staff bot, and then the staff bot wouldn't say anything. So it bugs out a lot, but it actually uh, spoke for me. Which I was surprised, because I hadn't heard it before. And I just assumed it was bugged out. Uh, this is under the daycare. Or, I mean, bleh. This is under the theater. So the theater's pretty easy to spot from the daycare. And then you could go down under the theater. And that's where this is. So you loot this to get your, uh... Uh... The mazer size control key. And now all the endoskeletons are gonna come and try and kill you. But before that, uh, in the room directly next door to where we just looted the Mazer Size key, you will notice this uh, foxy cardboard cutout in the back here. So just go ahead and take a quick picture of that. And we're going to need to take a picture of uh, all the animatronics. So 
Here's Chica over by here. This is just outside Monty's Gator Golf, or just right next door to it, uh, to the entranceway, or the elevator that takes you there. And that's where you find Chica. Take a picture of that. Uh, this is back where we initially got the, uh, the backstage pass. So that's where the Freddy cutout is. And then you're going to have to come all the way back to Fazcade for the Bonnie photo. So there's that one. You can only get these once you have the camera, so that's why we're getting these now. But there you go. And also, Princess Quest 2 is here! And you should have already did the first one, assuming you're following my guide uh, to the letter. But yes, this is the second one. And I will show you once again how to do the puzzle in this Princess Quest as well. In case you're stupid and can't fucking figure it out for yourself. That, don't worry, that's what I'm here for. But there you go. That's how you do this one. Can I just say, though, I love the track that plays in, um... Fucking Princess Quest. Like, the music. It's so, so good. I love it. Very, very good. And, in fact, you would have already heard it in this video. Because I was using it for music. And this is the bakery. Completely optional area. You would have had no reason to come here prior to this moment or for any story purposes but if you do come over here there's definitely some goodies some collectibles there's the monty magnet oh you also get a trophy for coming into the bakery i know that but there you go i think this is the hoodie if 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 that's the hoodie my memory is godlike i want to say that's the hoodie i could be wrong let's see let's see if i'm right oh that was the hoodie holy shit now the hoodie was is the only thing out of all the shit you could get like out of the fizzy faz i assumed upped your stamina bar uh the shoes i assumed made you run faster stuff like that and then the the freddy upgrades and the flashlight upgrades are self-explanatory they're obvious but the hoodie was the only upgrade where i was like what the fuck does this do and uh turns out someone in my live stream chat told me during my run that uh the hoodie actually makes you harder to detect and that's pretty dope. Like, so getting that, like, sooner rather than later, I don't know how soon you're allowed to enter the bakery. I don't remember what security uh, level that you need to even get here. But yes, once you have uh, all the uh, photos of the cardboard cutouts of the characters using the fast cam, you can come here, uh, refer to earlier in the video for the locations of those uh, cutouts to take the pictures. But yes, if you come back to the daycare, that secret door will now be open. You could come in here, loot some exclusive collectibles that are pretty hard to find. They're pretty hidden. They're hidden pretty well, but not well enough. Also, there's an arcade in here. This is the Balloon World or Balloon Boy or whatever the fuck minigame. And there is a trophy to play it. We have to do something very specific in this minigame. However, disclaimer, playing Balloon World almost guaranteed will make your game crash. It happens a lot. And my game crashed like three times in a row trying to play Balloon World. And you literally have to get lucky. Now, maybe they, maybe at the time you're watching this video, maybe that's no longer the case. Maybe it runs a lot better and the game doesn't crash as much because patches, uh, you know, quality of life fixes and shit. Maybe that's the case, but... As of right now, Balloon World almost always makes your game crash. Hell, it even happened to Markiplier, and I remember in his video, uh, and that was heartbreaking to see that. Because it was after 6 a.m., and then you would have to start back at the beginning of 6 a.m. when Freddy asks you if you want to stay at the Pizzaplex, and it's a fucking dick, it's a motherfucker, it's bullshit, and that is exactly why saving after 6 a.m. is amazing. Anyways, so basically you play through long enough, and you see that purple little squiggle? Um, you have to just fly into it. Despite taking damage, just fly into it. And once you do, this will happen. You'll get it glitched out. And, th and then you'll get your trophy. Now, that purple little squiggle, I don't know if it's always in the same spot. But basically, you just always want to keep your eye out for it. And once you spot it, just fly into it, and it's that simple. That's the trophy. Easy peasy. Now we're going to talk about this trophy, Opa. And this is to break 10 plates. Now, this trophy is very easy. Why am I only doing it now, this late into the game? Well, because I, I wanted to show you guys exactly how I did it. So I came to L Chips, and I made a save at the save station there. And then you come over here, and here's the stack of plates. And what I did was I would destroy them. And then what I would do is I would run back to the save, save, and then uh, load my game. What happens when you do that is the plates respawn. But it also remembers that you destroyed them. 
So if you just uh, go destroy the plates, save your game, and then load, the plates respawn, do it again, rinse and repeat, do that ten times, you get your trophy. And yeah, if that wasn't already incredibly obvious. Okay, so this is officially uh, the point where I have defeated Monty, and I have the Monty upgrade now. So what you want to do is come back to the maintenance tunnels. Uh, the very beginning of the game was when we were last here, uh, accessible via Rockstar Row. Back in the early game, this was when um, Monty, Chica, and Roxy are all chasing you through the uh, cinematic event. But yeah, you just walk all the way back through here, backtracking. Uh, and now that Freddy has his Roxy upgrade, and his Monty upgrade, and his Chica upgrade, he uses all three, uh, in this area, you can nab a slew of collectibles. There's a bunch of shit here that you can only get once you have all these upgrades. And, uh, yeah! And, yeah, like I said, this was back where we were in the beginning of the game, so... You probably f have long forgotten about this area by now, but, uh... Yeah, you come back here and you're like, Whoa, holy shit, I didn't know all this stuff was here. And yeah, it is. But yeah, so we're going to be nabbing a bunch of collectibles from here. Uh, moving forward. But, uh, yeah, you know, that's how it is. That's how it be! But, um, you know. Also, <laughs> you probably already know this, but... You just want to be careful. It's, it's a lot easier when you have the Freddy upgrades, but if Freddy's power ever runs out and you're still inside him, he fucking murders you. <laughs> he, you literally die. So yeah, you never want it. You you make you want to make sure the second it says low power, if he's about to run out, you get your ass out of him pronto, um, or find a safe station. But yeah, you, that is something you would not want to fucking risk. Uh, especially after 6 a.m. Dying to some bullshit like that. Uh, but chances are you would have already known that by now, because you probably would have already had it happen. Or have seen it. Or the like. Or what have you. I don't know. I don't know what order you do shit. But, yeah. We almost got them all. We're almost done with all the collectibles. As you can see, there are a fuck ton of collectibles in this game. And, uh, much to my dismay, because th these are always, like, when a game has a fuck ton of collectibles, that is always what guarantees that a Path to Platinum video is going to be long. Because this video is already over an hour long. <laughs> and I, that, that shit, I'm always, like, crying inside, man. Having to, having to edit an hour long video with this much content and editing, like, ugh, it's a lot of work. A lot of time and effort goes into these. Um, it helps when the game is a lot of fun. And this game was a lot of fun. I When the game is a lot of fun, I enjoy editing it. When the game sucks, and it's a slog, and it's tedious, then I have a lot of trouble. Like, uh, for example, I tried... I don't know. There was a game that had a fu metric fuck ton of collectibles. Uh, Jedi Fallen Order. I wanted to make a Path to Platinum video for that game back in the day. I literally scrapped it. I, I was like probably like 20 minutes in or some shit of footage. And I was like, fuck this. There's just way too many. I can't do it. Like, the, it was it was driving me mad. My brain was fucking fried, melting. Anyways, uh, you'll notice we're back at the loading docks. This is an area... I, I was saying this before earlier in the video when we first got to the loading docks. But there, there are a fuck ton of collectibles in this area. Case in point, as you can see, and from you from the footage you're viewing right now, you'll notice that there was a lot of uh, this area that I had not explored. But again, that's because I wanted to wait until I had the Roxy upgrade, because especially because if you come here earlier in the game, not only is Chica wandering around, so it's very easy to die, but there's also 700 staff bots in this area, and it is just so annoying trying to run around pick up picking up this stuff. When, if one of those motherfuckers spot you, Chica's just gonna spawn and try and kill you. And just Chica's presence, in general, just sucks. Um, it, it makes it very stressful. And that's why I love, um, collectible hunting, like, when you get towards the end of the game. Because the animatronics don't really bother you. And this is way back at the daycare. Uh, 
you can actually this this room is just to the right of the uh, the play area where you fought the uh, moon animatronic and there's a message in here you, you you only need level two security to get in this room but back when you first visit here you don't have that so that's why we got it so late but here we go now i'm going to talk about the this is the final step of the trophy are you having fun yet so assuming you've been watching the video the whole way through and you played the first two princess quests again if you want to know where those are check the timestamps in the description uh and then you are able to uh do the vanny ending uh, you must also have viewed the cutscene at the end of phaser blast if you missed it you'll have to do another run but yes again refer to the timestamps in the description but yeah so now we have access to this room which is where the final princess quest is and now we're actually able to play it so you play this all the way through i'll show you the uh the final puzzle here at the end of princess quest 3 this is how you do it uh, there's an evil foxy animatronic chasing you through this maze but uh, we avoid him pretty well he seemed kind of glitchy or buggy like he he'd get stuck on walls a lot for me so it made it pretty easy to avoid him but uh like like see right there he just gets stuck for no reason but uh yeah fucking um he almost got me there jesus <laughs> uh yeah so you play through princess quest 3 and then once you beat it you get the quote-unquote good ending i don't know if that's considered the true ending but um yeah there's a trophy to do that uh i won't spoil the ending don't worry i'm not gonna play the entire cutscene but yeah so that's how you do that and then there's this trophy this should be the last trophy you need called hazard pay so it it's it wants you to discover the problems within roxy's raceway you can only do this once you have the monty upgrade as you can see so just come back here and then make your way through here now this there will be an elevator at the end of the path here, and it says it's a one-time use. If you go down the elevator, there's no going back, and you're hard committing to, uh, you know, entering this area. Now, the, but the funny thing is, when you enter this elevator, the trophy pops. So you don't even have to do what comes next to get the trophy, which is hilarious. Like, because there's an entire boss fight and a whole thing that happens when you go down this elevator... And it's really cool, and if you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend just playing it anyway. Even if you already got all the trophies in the game, just do it, because it's awesome. Um, and it's one of the coolest parts of the game. But yeah, it's, it's just hilarious that they don't actually make you play it, and you, the game just gives you the trophy just for walking over here. Which, it's fucking bizarre! It's like, what the hell? Why, why put the content, like, or why put the trophy and make you get it without actually having earned it or doing the content that it's associated with i don't know it's fucking bizarre it's weird it's strange uh who knows but anyways that is every trophy in five nights at freddy's security breach so that should be your platinum uh or if you're playing on ps5 and the trophy's still glitched hopefully it's patched out by now or if not hopefully very soon but that's gonna be it all collectibles thank you guys so much for watching I truly hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course hit that notification bell to support me. I would really appreciate that. Also, fun fact, I mentioned it a few times in this video already, but I uh, love to live stream, and not only that, but when I do a Path to Platinum video, I usually use the footage recorded from during my live stream so and that's what i did with this so i live streamed my entire playthrough of five nights getting all the trophies and shit so if that's something that interests you like if you guys would like to follow along with me in the future seeing how i uh you know my experience with these new games or uh getting the trophies alongside me uh you know that's something you could definitely do so check out the live streams i love ha having new faces show up and chilling with new people of amazing quality like yourselves so uh think about doing that if you haven't already or don't and lastly i will say that of course this path to platinum series is a series meaning i have an entire playlist over on the home page of my channel uh also links in the description for all my path to platinum guides and videos for other games in case you guys want to scoop up any platinums that you may not have gotten you could check those videos out over on my channel right now. And uh, who knows, maybe you'll get some more Platinum Trophies. Or maybe not. Who knows. But anyways, that was it for this one, guys. Have a great rest of your day. And I will definitely see you in the next one.